So we got Dylan coming on. Dylan, how's it going? We got Seth on, Jared, myself. Good to see you. How's everything going in Aurora? Uh, it's going pretty good. Good, good. Okay, so you guys wrestled in the Fargo finals. Are you going to Super 32 as well, Dylan? Uh, no, I'm not. No. So the next possible matchup that you two could have is potentially Iron Man, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, man. I want to... I don't yeah. live far from there. I know you don't live far from there. I only live about 15 minutes from Dylan. How far is Walsh Jesuit from Aurora? Probably like 20, probably 25 minutes, maybe 30. Nice. So I just can't wait to see it. And I think there'll be guys like, uh, is, uh, geez, oh, Pete's Rylan Rogers. He'll probably be at the weight class, right? Yeah. And TJ Stewart's moving up too. So Stewart Rogers, anybody else you've heard of? Well, so since it's Ohio weights, a lot of the 182 pounders are going to probably. 190? Yeah. So 82 and 95 will kind of be combined, basically. Oh, my goodness. That is going to be a killer weight class. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's going to be 190. Uh, Dylan, how big are you right now? I weigh like 195 pretty much every morning. So you're 95, and you are two, about 197, uh, Seth? Yeah, right around there. 190 is probably not going to be a problem for you, is it? No. Oh, my God. I can't wait for this matchup. Any Anything you guys are looking forward to besides wrestling one another potentially? No, I mean, if we don't wrestle Iron Man, I'm sure we're going to wrestle at Brexville too. I mean, yeah, either way, it's going to be a battle for the one. So you guys are at the, you're at the same – you're twice. There's two potential matchups between you guys. Yeah. yeah. Brexville and I love it because Brexville is the holiday tournament. Brexville is like December 29th and 30th, usually like around Midlands and scuffle time. Wow. I did not realize you guys were at that tournament too. So if you guys don't hit it, Iron Man, I'll get, I, that, that's another place that's like 25 minutes away from me. So the, I win, I win either way, man. I'm going to be able to watch you guys wrestle either way. I'm pumped. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, Seth, do you got anything else for us? Nope. Nope, you guys don't want to trash talk each other or anything. I don't, we don't want that. Not that we want that, but you guys are good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm right. working. Tell Seth. Coach Weber we said what's up, Seth. Um, and we said hello. All right. Seth, good luck, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, boys. Yeah. Yep. All right, Dylan. Welcome to the Barbarian. I guess we're giving you guys like 25, 20, 25 minute slots. Welcome to the Barbarian Hour. Dylan Fishbeck. The uh, number one, 195 in the country. Depends what poll you look at, I guess. Right, Dylan? Yeah. I'm guessing you're not worried about polls at all. You're worried about uh, snapping necks and cashing checks, right? Yeah. <laughs> so f you and Seth wrestled in the Fargo finals. You tech fall them. I, I pinned them. You yeah. pinned them, sorry. Was, would it have been a tech mall? Uh, probably not. I, I don't know. It could have been, but I think I was up like – Maybe four points at the time. Maybe it was like turning into six points, I think. Okay. So it was like a 6 0 lead. You're no, leading by it, six. It was, a, it was a close match. Okay. Yeah, well, you guys, did you guys train at the training camp together? Uh, not really. Uh, we went, we wrestled one live go, and that was the only time we ever wrestled. Okay. So after you guys compete, you know, you guys see each other at one of the two or both, this is that something you guys would train afterwards? You know, or, or uh, what would that look like? I mean, honestly, when you have two studs like you, you know, within uh, the same state, you know, what's that look like? I, I don't know. Like, it's it's really hard to find guys around our size, especially. In the it's not like you're lightweight and you got all yeah. these options, right? So like, other than college guys, and there's really not that many college guys around our size either. So, I, I mean, it's pro it'd probably be an option. Depends. I don't know. You are headed to NC State, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's Raleigh. Is it Raleigh or Durham? It's Raleigh. So Raleigh. Yeah. Durham is Duke. Yeah. Yeah. So Raleigh, Durham, and then Chapel Hill is right there, too. They're all within, like, five, ten minutes of each other, aren't they? Yeah. Well, like, it's called, like, the research triangle. So, basically, it, like, makes a triangle. They're all within, like, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, they're right there, man. Because yeah. I've done some stuff at uh, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And I remember we met somebody in, like, Raleigh, and we were there, like, it was crazy how fast we were there. I was like, holy yeah. smokes, and 
porch real small. Well, it used to be. I don't know if it is anymore. But um, NC State, man, they are on the upswing. You know, Seth's going to Ohio State. You're going to NC State. I, you know, I got to ask you, being an Ohio guy, why NC State? So NC State is, well, for me, uh, in the recruiting process, uh, the biggest thing was culture. And I believe NC State has the best culture by far of all the schools I talked to. And just the culture at NC State of like, just with the coaches and the whole team. And they're just all great people and just kind of support everyone as a whole. And that's why I like NC State the most. And obviously they have a beautiful campus and they're pretty good at wrestling. So those are just, uh, I guess, extra benefits. But the culture of uh, the Wolfpack basically is just overall really good. When so we talk plan. about it, when we talk about it, you guys, um, you know, there are obviously he, he's coach Papalizzi is an amazing leader, right? He's a, an amazing CEO coach, got excellent assistant coaches. He just lost a couple guys though. Right. Yeah. A couple guys left the, the RTC and left. He had some assistant coaches leave. Um, some cor- went to Cornell, right? Yeah. It was just uh, the one coach and then Gwizdowski. Vincent, away. Vincent and Gwizdowski, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Hall is still there. Yeah. Um, coach Popolese is the head coach, and then I think Clayton or uh, uh, Jack. Kevin Jack, and then Kevin Tim, Jack. Timmy McCall. Uh, he's been a volunteer assistant, and then he just uh, finally be- became on staff as an assistant. Uh, okay. Wisconsin guy. Yeah. Okay. So McCall would be someone you would train with. He's a bigger guy. Yeah. Uh, I actually went with him about a month ago. Uh, They came up and ran a practice, and uh, I rolled with him a little bit uh, before he was number one. So he'll probably help me out a lot. So who's number one? You had a huge win there, right? Yeah. Huge. I mean, dude, you're on a roll, man. (laughs) You won Fargo. You won who's number one. I mean, when do you start figuring out what you're going to pick and choose to go to, Dylan? Like, you know, you're not going to Super 32. I mean, I don't think you really have to go to Super 32, right? But why? What? What's the method to the madness as far as I'm going to go here? I'm not going to go here. What? How do you pick and choose competitions? So I I kind of debated going to Super 32, but then I uh, was kind of talking to like my coaches and my parents that just like, I mean, I always played football, so I never went anyway. But this year I thought about going uh, simply for that reason because I have never gone. And But I think it's important to be healthy going into the wrestling season. And especially this tournament is like kind of preseason right before the season. I think it draws out the folk style season uh, even longer. So it, I think it's important for me to be healthy going into the season. So that's why I chose not to wrestle at Super 32. And – because I, th- I think we wrestle a tough enough schedule that probably going to wrestle most of those guys anyway during the season. So there's really no point in me going to Super 32 right now. You talk being healthy, and, and Zeb says the method to the madness. Is the plan 197 NC State? You know, you're walking around at 195. You know, what what's it look like? You know, to- Yeah, I mean, obviously, probably right now I'd be an 84-pounder, but uh, – the NC State coaches don't really care what weight I'm at. They they basically just recruit us for who we are, not as a body. So they don't care what weight I'm at. Uh, hopefully I'll get up big enough to wrestle 197. Uh, I know we'll see once I get down to Raleigh and start their program pretty much and see how much I could put on to maybe wrestle 97. But I'll probably be 84 at least for the first year. Uh, in college do you miss body bagging people in football just crushing people because i know you did yeah uh, i mean i go to the games and watch now uh which is obviously fun but it's definitely hard, still kind of hard to watch uh and our team this year is pretty solid right now we're seven and oh and probably we're, I think we're ranked like top three right now. So that that side of it definitely makes me miss playing, knowing that I would be on the field like 
Friday night when I'm just watching, but uh, I chose not to play just because I couldn't risk getting injured. Uh, so I've gotten injured the past two years. A lot of people didn't probably don't know that. Uh, I broke my hand my sophomore year, and then I fractured my back last year playing football. So it's probably just best for me not to play this year, uh, just because I have so much to risk in college. Maybe if you stop murdering people. If you stop murdering people and using your body like that, maybe you wouldn't be maybe you wouldn't be hurt all the time. Yeah. And that's another reason why uh I am not going to Super 32 is because I was always banged up going into wrestling just from football. So like a part of that is just being healthy for this year. Uh to make have you ever watched Alex Marinelli when he just pounds people? He pulls on their head and he pounds them. And he's always hitting his knee and he kicks yeah. him in the legs. Mm-hmm. And and you know, and if you've ever noticed, at the NCAA tournament, he always he's always really beat up, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you punish people, when you have a punishing style, like you would yeah. you were linebacker in football, right? Yeah, linebacker, running back. Dude, you were killing people, you were smashing yeah. people. Yeah. When you're punishing people, it's punishing on you too. Yeah, definitely. Right. And I think that's I mean, like, I'm like. I get where you're coming from with the football thing. Yeah. I get it. Right. I, I like, I get it because you have such a punishing style and you're, you're slick in wrestling. You're real slick in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Football. It's, it's hard to be slick in football yeah. cause you're a battering ram. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. you missed the body bagging people, just crushing people. Huh? Yeah. But, so what, yeah. so what's the fall look like? You know, you're used to grinding, right? Heck of a summer you're used to football and then, you know, all these tournaments. So what, you know, what's it look like now until season, you know, Seth was on and saying now he's grinding multiple times a day. What, what's it look like, you know, a day, a week for you right now? Uh, so right now I actually, after he's number one, I've taken pretty much time off, like a couple weeks off already. Uh, I actually messed up my thumb pretty bad. So I was letting that heal a little more and still healing, but uh, I haven't wrestled at all pretty much since he was number one. And then I just started lifting yesterday. So I'm just going to start lifting a little bit th- this week, maybe start wrestling probably a little more next week, but it won't be as, I guess, intense just yet. But once we get closer to like uh, November, when the season starts, I'll probably ramp it up more. Seth was talking about how COVID really took a toll on him, right? It was just everybody was out of routine and you know, there was no people in the stands and he just really didn't like that. Did COVID take a toll on you like that too? As far as like during the season with like fans and stuff? Or Everything, just, just the whole like it's hard to get motivated to work out. It's hard to – he I mean, said he, during, he, he during struggled. Like, yeah. During the like initial summer of COVID, I – I think it actually benefited me a lot because uh, it. I never really committed to lifting like consistently. That was the first time I actually started lifting like consistently four days a week. And so that helped me kind of, I guess, almost kind of like lifting a lot more now. And so ever since then, it, it just kind of helped me lifting wise. But wrestling wise, I mean, yeah, it kind of sucked not to have fans and whatnot but it, either way you're just wrestling another kid so I don't know. that didn't bother you you actually went the other way you got better you got better because you dedicated to lifting right yeah I mean it was good for you yeah because I've always been a middleweight uh pretty much my whole life and going up to an upper weight is definitely a different style of wrestling and I think that has benefited me uh just because I've I kind of wrestle almost like a lightweight in some, uh, like some ways. And so moving up to an upper weight, I think in my favor, most of the time, not fighting the scale. What is that like now? Do you, do you love not fighting with the scale? Yeah. Uh, it, it's, I think it's the best way to wrestle, honestly, as long as you're, I mean, I've, I've cut before obviously, but, uh, I think if you're strong enough for the weight, and believe that you can compete at the weight you want to wrestle, then I think it's the healthiest way to compete. Uh, you don't have to worry about cutting weight or, and a lot of guys that cut a lot tend to be injured. So 
me not cutting has also helped me kind of stay healthier and I, I like wrestling, not having to worry about my weight too much. So Jared was the same size as he is right now, and he wrestled 125 pounds, and they used to not draw because you can draw in college. You know that, right? Really? I think he started Jared, weight, right? Yeah, it just started pick, that when we were in college. I think. Yeah, they, when we were in college, you could draw. You, they just started drawing because it was a weight cutting thing. They wouldn't draw for Jared on like these weeknight duels. <laughs> This, he was cutting to 25. Jared, what you were you cutting out from 40? Uh there was uh, I, I had it under control, but I was you know thinned out already. But yeah, it was oh a, the God. worst thing we could have done, right? Because I was cutting me and little Mark Wentz. Remember Mark used to like be oh, in the corner. He, he was bad though. Yeah. They were hey, they were but it would, we should have drew one right? hour weigh in, dude. Yeah. One hour weigh in. This guy was yeah. massive, the same size human as he is now would cut cut down to 125 on a weeknight and it was like a two we'd have these weird Tuesday night and Thursday night duels I remember oh it was horrible man it was horrible I'm, I felt bad for the guys who cut weight I didn't cut any weight yeah yeah you're right no I, I'm just agreeing with you. you're right guys are hurt a lot man they're hurt because yeah. they're cutting weight mm-hmm. Ugh, yeah, no I, thanks. I, I cut uh cut my freshman and sophomore year a decent amount and then after that I was just Pretty much wrestle whatever I weigh and feel good going into my matches. And I think it's the best way to perform. So when you're getting back on the mat here in the next couple of weeks, who are you going to be rolling with? Yeah, that's actually a good question because there's not really not many guys. All, all my training partners uh, pretty much are in college or uh, live far away and probably going to train with Logan Shepard uh, quite a bit. Uh, I mean, he lives like an hour away, but we trained leading up to Fargo and he's a good partner for me. And then there's a couple guys out of college that I've talked to. Uh, I might start rolling with and nice. Nice. in season. I'm probably going to have to go with a couple older guys as well because this, this next year, I'm just pretty much focusing on getting better for college. Like, I mean, I, yeah, this year is like important, I guess, but I'm more focused on getting prepared for college. Right. Big picture, right? Yeah. You have anything else for us? We have uh, Casey Swiderski's jumping on here next if you want to hang on. And, uh, right. But do you have anything else before we let, let him in the chat? Uh, no, I, I don't really have too much to say. Well, just let me li- – listen, I can cut a quick promo because we got two guys that won that won it who's number one. One guy beat the pound for pound guy, number one guy in the country. One guy is the number one guy in the country. So uh, yeah, let's have let's have two. Well, why wouldn't we have two guys from who's number one on that both won? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. He just jumped off. Hold on. I don't know if he had a connection issue. Dylan, how good do you feel at like 195 pounds wrestling 190? I mean, did the guys feel big out in Fargo at 195? Uh, yeah. There was a. I mean, pretty much every kid I think was bigger than me. I don't know. Some people say I look big, but I walk around the weight I wrestle, so. Uh, kids that were did feel bigger, but I, I feel like they didn't feel stronger. If that makes any sense, like they were big, but I felt like I was just as strong. Did you run in any shoe law type dudes? Just massive humans. Uh, at junior duels, actually, yeah, there's probably a couple kids. The kid Wyatt Volker from Iowa, I wrestled him at junior duels. He he was pretty jacked. Wyatt then, Volker's dad is an NCAA champ for Iowa State, I believe. Oh, really? I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Wyatt Volker's the real deal, dude. Yeah, he, he was a Greco, uh, Fargo champ in Greco. So. Yeah, Volker's a stud. Hey, was Rylan Rogers third at 195 this year at Fargo? Yeah. Who was – so it was you and Seth, and then was Rylan third? Yeah, Rylan – he lost to Colby Franklin earlier in the tournament, and then he beat him for third. Got it. So he yeah. came back and beat him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, wait a minute. Is your old teammate from Western Reserve going to be at Ironman? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Because I think they're there. They've been there in the past. I don't know why they wouldn't be there. Yeah. I don't know if he's 195 or 220. Uh, well, since it's 190 and 215, I, I already guess he'd be 215. Got it. Hey, Casey, turn your camera for us real quick. Which way is it right now? It's 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 up and down. We need it sideways. There we go. All oh, right. Man. Look okay. at that lion's mane. Jared, look at that lion's mane head of hair. What do, you got? <laughs> what do you got rocking? You got what you got any cab? What do you got under there? Let's see it. Uh, I don't have uh, 
he's got you got the curls though. Boy band hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Squares has got the boy band hair, but he's a killer. I like having two killers on. Okay, so both of you guys won at who's number one? Swiderski, they're calling yours the upset of the year. Did you know that? Yeah, I seen, I seen, yeah. You don't think it was the upset of the year, though, do you? No, no, honestly, I don't. <laughs> I thought you were going to win all along, right? Yeah, for sure. That was the plan the whole time. And uh, obviously, I'm not going to sit here and say it was an upset. No, there's two people that know it wasn't an upset, me and him. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, Dylan, going into that event, was there any doubt in your mind that you weren't going to win? No, I just pretty much focus on myself and wrestle my matches pretty much and not really worry about anything else except just how I wrestle. What was your favorite part about that? Because that's a real individualized thing. The who's number one, they fly yeah. you and a coach down, right? Yeah, they, uh, they only flew me down. They flew, so your coach and parents and everybody else had to pay their own way to go to Dallas, right? Yeah, pretty much. What is it like? Because it's not you're not traveling in a team. What did, did you did you did you like that or was it weird? I mean, it was pretty cool, but it was also like it was kind of weird in a way because never wrestled an event like that. Uh, I don't know. It was it was it wasn't even like a duel either. It was just like a totally different like experience, but it, it was definitely pretty cool. Nice. Casey, what'd you think? Did you like, who did you coach, uh, who came down with you, Coach Roberts? Scotty B, uh, man. Um, Scotty Burnett came down. He was one, he was in my corner. Um, Simmons was there, my dad. Roberts did come down by himself. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah two was, guys. Yeah, two guys. Two guys who won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Dundee, Michigan's not playing. Aurora's like that. Aurora's got like, you guys aren't that big, and you got a bunch of national, a couple of nationally ranked guys, right, Dylan? Yeah, we have. Three nationally ranked guys right now. How many for Dundee, Casey? I know we know two number one guys. How many other guys? You know what? That's it, man. Just you, is it you two guys? But we got a lot of guys right on the cusp. Um, but we, I mean, we had eight state champs last year, so you guys had eight yeah. state champs. Oh. Yeah, we had eight state champs last year, and Buell <laughs> that's was over half the weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. Oh my God. I did not I mean, know that. Last year we had more nationally ranked guys. We had Stoney and uh, I think just Stoney was nationally ranked and me, Braden, obviously, but I think there's more. I can't even remember right now, honestly. I love it. I yeah, love we had, you know, we you had guys are both Burnett guys, though, right? Both of you guys go to Burnett stuff, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I go to camps in the summer. Camps in the summer. And then Casey, you've been going ever since you were a little guy, right? Yeah, I've been going forever. I love it. Dylan, you came when you came from oh, Jesus, Illinois or where did you guys did you go California, Illinois, then Ohio? Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. I remember when you guys came right from Illinois, you were probably like a sixth or seventh grader, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember you being there as like a middle schooler. Yeah. It's so crazy. I mean, I feel so old right now thinking about this. Yeah. Casey ran through a plate glass, ran through Scotty's plate glass window, which we'll talk about when you're off, but Dylan, do you have anything else for us before we get into talking to Casey? Uh, no, I mean, I don't know. I, I would say, like you said, Casey uh, is the biggest upset, but I, I was telling people Casey was going to win that whole week. I didn't think it was that much of an upset. And So three people, Casey, three people knew. Three people, yeah. Three people. I know your old man knew too. <laughs> Dylan, yeah. thank you for the time. We will see you. Uh, I'll probably be seeing you during training camps and every st- stuff coming up here in the next couple of weeks. All right. Yep. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yep. Thanks for the time, Dylan.